Good morning. Welcome to Christ our Redeemer Lutheran Church. To those in person, to those online, welcome in the name of Jesus the Good Shepherd. This fourth Sunday of Easter, which is historically Good Shepherd Sunday, um, and I was looking through the service, I'm going, how many times will we hear uh, or sing or take part in the 23rd Psalm in its entirety? And I counted at least three times. Uh, One psalm hymn, uh, one uh, anthem, and one communion hymn. Uh, So I think there's a message that's seeking to get through. Um, In John 10, uh, Jesus the Good Shepherd, uh, but the Good Shepherd is a beloved image in paintings, in art, in song, images and scenes of green pastures, still waters, and the banquet table of abundance. But this promise is one grounded in relationship. Christ the Good Shepherd provides, protects, feeds, and lays down his life for the flock. Life abundant life everlasting. As you're able, please rise as we gather at the waters of baptism and remember the promise that is from God. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the wellspring of grace, our Easter, and our joy. Amen. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Alleluia. Immersed in the promises of baptism, let us again give thanks for what God has done for us. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your voice thundered over the deep and water became the essence of life. Adam and Eve beheld Eden's verdant waters. The ark carried your creation through the flood into a, new, into a new day. Miriam led the dancing as your people passed through the sea into freedom's land. In a desert pool, the Ethiopian official entered your boundless baptismal life. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Hallelujah. At the river, your beloved son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' own death and resurrection, you open the floodgates of your reconciling love, freeing us to live as Easter people. We rejoice with glad hearts, giving all honor and praise to you through the risen Christ, our source of living water, and the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. The 
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Christ, the good shepherd of the sheep, you seek the lost and guide us into your fold. Feed us and we shall be satisfied. Heal us and we shall be whole. Make us one with you for you live and you reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Be seated. The children can come forward at this time for the children's sermon. Good morning. We got some more friends with us today. So, does anybody know what I have here? Nobody knows? Is it a big candy cane? Is it a J? Hmm. Well, maybe you don't know because... We don't have a whole lot of shepherds around anymore. Did you know that shepherds use these? What do shepherds take care of? Sheep, that's right. So today is Good Shepherd Sunday. And in our gospel lesson, Jesus tells us that he is the good shepherd. So who do you think are the sheep? His disciples? And who are disciples? People? People that follow him? Yeah, people that follow him are his sheep. But you know what? Jesus says that he is the good shepherd and he lays down his life for his sheep. So how did Jesus lay down his life for his sheep? What did he do? What happened a few weeks ago? He died on a cross, didn't he? So he laid down his life. What? He sacrificed himself. That's right. So back, back in the day where there were lots of sheep and shepherds, there still are some today, but they would have a fold, like a fenced-in area where the sheep would go at night. And you know what? They would 
there was one open area where they would lead all the sheep in, and you know what the shepherd did? The shepherd would lay across the opening in case a wild animal came. So he would protect them. That's what, the, what a shepherd did. So Jesus, Jesus is saying that he is like a shepherd who protects his flock. But he also says in this gospel lesson, he also says that there are people that don't belong to his flock. But one day we will all be a part of his flock because Jesus loves us and he gave his life as a sacrifice so that we can all be a part of God's kingdom. So we can thank God for sending us Jesus and for being our good shepherd. Thank you for coming up. Have a good week. A reading from Acts. The next day the rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Anas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners, Peter and John, stand in their midst, they inquired, By what power, by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who is sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. The word of the Lord.
The second reading from 1 John. We know love by this, that Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? Little children, let us love not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this we will know that we are from the truth and we will assure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God and we receive from him whatever we ask because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment that we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the spirit that he has given us. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the, good, not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own. My own know me, just as a father knows me, and I know the father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this, for this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay, down, lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. In the name of, of Jesus, the Good Shepherd, amen. What we want, what God gives. The late, great Gilda Radner, she said, I wanted, I wanted the perfect ending. Now I've learned the hard way that some poems do not rhyme. Some stories don't have a clear beginning, middle, or end. Life is about not knowing, having to change, taking the moment and making the best of it without knowing what's going to happen next. Delicious ambiguity. Her first words are key here. I wanted. What we want out of life, what God gives, and what God gives is more than enough, even in the ambiguity. What we want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Huh. What's going on there? And so yeah, I've been, I've been marinating in the 23rd Psalm all week. And like I said, we, now we are too. 
Um, but that, that psalm hymn, hymn we just sung by Marty Haugen, I love his paraphrase, the way he puts it. It is a poem, it does rhyme, but it points to trusting even when we don't know where we're going. Where we're going. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears from death into life. And so it's, it's nice to kind of look at this, look at the 23rd Psalm, and I'll get to it in a minute, that normally this would be sung, read in a very different setting. Usually with an urn or a casket right here, right? So that, that's an emotional trigger just, just there. But then we say, why? Why this psalm? Why the 23rd Psalm? Why is it so beloved? Let's, the kids, what is that? When I grow up, I want to be a shepherd, said no preschooler ever. I mean, they'll, they'll, wear the, they'll wear the bathrobe and carry the stick for the Christmas program, sure. But it is not what you call a, an aspirational career. But why do we come back? Well, it's usually because what, I, what was just said. When do we hear this? That, that those verses are there when the rug is pulled out from under us. We want, we yearn, we crave for assurance and an anchor. Now this, the days after 9-11 that evening of 9-11, it was practically a lifetime ago, but I remember many of us, we opened our churches for prayer vigils that evening, and we saw a lot of faces we normally don't see. They, they go to church, but, but when, when, when it was an event like that, when things got so tragic, many of those folks told me, I want to see a cross in the worship space. I want to see the candles. I want, that, I want that liturgy, the Lord's Prayer, the 23rd Psalm. That's what's needed. And then I'll meet with families and folks like me. We're planning that memorial, that funeral service for the family member, and they may or may not have darkened the door of a church in 30 years for decades, and the reasons might be legit. We can talk about that. They barely remember the Lord's Prayer, but they want the 23rd Psalm because the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. It's there. It's permanent press. It doesn't wash out. Assurances, anchors in that dark valley. Why the 23rd Psalm? Why the shepherd? Why the sheep? Sheep smell. They can be loud. They frighten easy. In today's angry and divided online culture, to be called a sheep is a low insult. It means one is too in easily influenced by herd mentality. To be a shepherd is not much better. Okay, for the kids, they get the bathrobe and the stick, but in the Christmas story, and all throughout Scripture, the shepherds were the losers and the outcasts. No fun pulling all-nighters and not much human interaction. But what's behind all that? Why the 23rd Psalm? Because it speaks to all of our senses. Green pastures. We know the feeling of at the end of a hot day, going out in the cool of the evening and standing barefoot on fresh grass. That's nice. The sound of slow moving, fresh, clean water. The, the gift of, an, of accompaniment, protection through a dark time, dark valleys, those places of loss, of death, some, some of the ones we even create ourselves. And to have that reassuring, familiar hand on our shoulder that says, I've got your back. 
the smell of the table, that familiar table that you remember, that that table was full of abundance. And it was also a safe place to be yourself even when you got gravy stain on your shirt. It's okay. You belong here. There is always a second chance. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. So what's behind all that? We call that contentment. That's why the 23rd Psalm. St. Teresa of Lisieux writes this, and it's a fantastic benediction that says, May today there be peace within. May you trust that you are exactly where you are meant to be. May you use the gifts that you have received and pass on the love that has been given to you. May you be content with yourself just the way you are. Let this knowledge settle into your bones. Contentment is grounded in trust. Beyond our wants, beyond our fears, from death to life. There's some good things we want or desire, or desire. We want safety. We want security. We want to know that we are valued for who we are. We want to, what's best for our family and the generations that come after us. We want a life that is ba- of one of balance, work and rest. We want to live and die surrounded by those who bring fullness to our lives. Beyond our wants, beyond our fears. Dick and Tara talked about the shepherd lying down at the gate that we heard in the gospel. I heard the story of many of you have traveled to the Holy Land, taken the bus tours, um, gone around, uh, and the the geography of Scripture come to life. There was one tour group, uh, they met up with a Palestinian Christian shepherd. Yeah, there's still a few around. And the Smart alecky American said, So, do those sheep respond to a good whack on the backside? Do you have to whip them into obedience? And the Palestinian Christian shepherd said, No, the flock does not respond to beatings. Fear and pain do not motivate. The flock responds to being led from ahead from the front, to have one to follow. This is the gift and the heart of the good shepherd who leads ahead beyond our wants, beyond our fears, from death to life. We trust there is our anchor, there is our life, Amen.
seek to follow where our Lord Jesus leads us. We confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed printed in your bulletin on page 9. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternal begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. Come in again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. We turn to you for meaning, holy God. Nurture in your children the gifts of the Spirit poured out in baptism, and let the mind of Christ guide the church. Give wisdom and discernment to our bishops, pastors, deacons, teachers, and leaders. Hear us, O God. Mercy is great. Sorry, God of grace. Sorry. We turn to you for renewal. Save our lives and ecosystems threatened by pollution and a changing climate. Cleanse the earth's waters and restore the soil. Preserve rainforests, deserts, and wildlife that generations to come may cherish your creation. God of grace, hear our prayer. We turn to you for justice. Uphold the worth and dignity of every person, especially any who experience hatred and rejection because of gender, ability, sexual orientation, color, ethnicity, or religion. God of grace, hear our prayer. We turn to you for healing. Send compassionate helpers to any who suffer because of war and violence. Shelter unhoused people. Befriend those who are lonely. Bring hope to any in despair and console the bereaved. We pray especially for Ilsa and Helen, God of grace, hear our prayer. We turn to you for purpose. Remind us of your faithfulness to this congregation. Increase our trust in your guidance and keep us near the cross. Grant that our acts of service will express Christ's sacrificial love. We pray for Good Shepherd Lutheran that they serve their surrounding community's needs. God of grace, hear our prayer. We turn to you for protection. Keep watch over your flock. We pray for two of our church families, Jason and Julie Johnson, and their children, Anna, Kate, Emily, and Alex, and Glenn Menning. We lift up those celebrating birthdays, Michelle, Carmen, Bobby, Allison, Day, Natalie, and Grant. God of grace, hear our prayer. We turn to you for peace. We honor the saints who lived in service to others. Inspire us by their example until you gather us into your kingdom. God of grace. Lift your hands, merciful God. We commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding and abundant love. Through Jesus Christ, our good shepherd, our res resurrected and living Lord. Amen. 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 The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Share a sign of God's peace.
can get through soon. Soon and very soon. We'll be with you. You were true. May life abundant, life eternal be ours in the name of Christ Jesus. Welcome again as we worship and work and serve together under the reign of our God. Several announcements. The second of three new member inquiry classes, sessions about our life and faith together at Christ our Redeemer will be held uh, during the education hour in my office. Uh, even if you didn't come to the first and wanted to come to the next ones, you are more than welcome. Um, we have a youth activity uh, after the education hour of the youth photo scavenger hunt. Uh, gather at Deacon Terrio's office at 1145 to carpool together. Two uh, teams are meeting this week, education team 530 on Tuesday, worship team 530 on Thursday, conference room for both. Uh, today is the deadline for the congregational family retreat at Luther Springs. Uh, next weekend, April 26th through 28th, that's Friday through Sunday. See Deacon Tara or me for details. The theme is Walking Wet, Exploring Our Baptismal Identity.
Let us pray. Risen one, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty, our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to life everlasting. And so with Mary Magdalene, Peter, all the witnesses of the resurrection with earth and sea, and all their creatures, with angels, archangels, cherubim, and seraphim. We praise your name and join their unending hymn. Almighty and merciful God, you are most holy, and great is the majesty of your glory. You so love the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks. He gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant, and my blood poured out for you and for all people that your sins may be forgiven. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ is Remembering, therefore, his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection, and ascension, and the promise of his coming again, we give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. And we ask you to mercifully accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with your word and Holy Spirit to bless us, your servants, and these your own gifts of bread and wine, so that we and all who share the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ may be filled with heavenly blessing and grace, and receiving the forgiveness of sin, may be formed to live as your holy people and be given our inheritance with all your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church now and forever. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom power and glory forever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ, the good shepherd, is made known to us in the breaking of the bread and sharing of the cup. 
come and share at God's table. There is abundance. There is a place for you. You may be seated.
Please rise as you are able. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in His grace now and to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. May the God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope bless you now and always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, rejoice, and be glad. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.